Welcome into this next part of the TAS tutorial. We're going to be looking at 3D movement and particularly without a fixed camera. So it's going to get really technical because there's lots of degrees of freedom here. But I'm going to talk you through the process that I use to do 3D movement and how you might go about it yourself. The game we're using today is Banjo-Kazooie and that's just primarily because I'm familiar with Banjo-Kazooie. But these concepts should extend out to any 3D game. So I'm going to show you first of all, the very first time that I tried to TAS 3D movement, which was this exact section of Banjo, and what I did wrong, essentially. So basically what I did was, well, I looked at uh, TAS Studio, and we have analog inputs for TAS Studio. So what that looks like is um, pretty much you can enter numbers for the analog stick, just like I showed you in the last video. And if we enter 127, then Banjo will move to the right. Maybe he won't move to the right because that was the Y axis. If we enter 127 here, he will move to the right because that's the X axis. So 127 on the X would move you right. And if I had uh, minus 128, I would move down. So these are the way that the N64 sticks work. Uh, PlayStation 1 sticks are a little bit different, but it's the same sort of concept. So pretty much what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing this and we're going to be going down to bottoms. So that is our goal. Um, so what I did when I tasked this, I basically copied out moving down right. And we're going to kind of aim for the frame where we hit bottles, right? So moving down right is not optimal because, well, Banjo is going to overshoot bottles, kind of hits the fence there. All right. We actually want to go through the fence and hit bottles. Uh, so maybe I don't need to go fully down right. I need to go maybe a little bit less on the down direction. So minus 50 could be more appropriate here. And we're going to try and do that. Now Banjo will actually hit bottles there, which is really good. What we want to do is we're going to time where I'm hitting bottles for and we're going to see what frame that's on. So it appears to be on 15571 and we're still going to use that as our guide for how well we're doing. 15571 is the number to remember. All right, so let's keep going. Maybe uh, minus 50 wasn't that great. Maybe let's go uh, minus 48 and see if that's any better. We'll trace that down and we'll see if we're there any faster. No, we're not. That's exactly the same. So maybe we need to go minus 46 and we'll see if they're there any faster. No, about exactly the same. So it seems like no matter what we do really here, it's going to be the same speed. Let's see if we can do that. 7, 1 again. Okay, uh, what about if maybe I try some different movement? So I'm going to jump at the start here. And actually, what I should probably have done was hold that joystick from the start of the level opening. So we'll see if we can do that and get any better. Yeah, that's a lot better actually. Uh, so we're looking at 15512. So one thing that you're going to test when you do 3D tasking is just test the movement of your character. Banjo at the moment has no moves unlocked. So what we can do is basically walk and jump. Maybe we can test if jumping is going to be any faster. I think that's the first frame where you can jump. Uh, let's see. That's about as early as you can jump there. So it actually looks like jumping did save quite a bit of time there, 15509. So that's our new record. And you can keep going down like that. Now I'm not going to get bogged down in the actual banjo specific movement, like jumping or walking or whatever it is, um, because that's just going to complicate things. So what I might actually do is I'll pull it back to what we had before and we're not going to do a jump. But I really want to show you what the problem with this is. So it looks like we've taken a straight line, but if you look at the angle here on script hook, what I've got open, that's 182. Uh, sorry, the one up here is 194, 193, 192, 180, 179. So rather than Banjo walking in a straight line across to bottles, if I can maybe zoom out here, rather than Banjo walking from the door in a straight line across to bottles, what he's actually doing is he's taking an arc across to bottles. Now, the reason that arc is happening is because our movement is bad. Like we're just holding the same direction. The camera's moving. And so when the camera's moving, our same direction on the joystick doesn't correspond to the same direction actually in the game. 
So what you have to do in 3D games, if the camera is dynamic, is you have to change your analog input every frame. And that is going to cost you heaps and heaps of time doing your TAS. But it's really important that you do do it. Otherwise, your TAS is going to be really suboptimal. So basically, 3D TASing is can you move in a straight line to all the places? So what you actually do to do this in practice is, well, let's just say just for simplicity, I want to get to this position, which is sort of where I'm touching bottles. Um, you would do this really precisely when you do it, like you'd figure out the exact position you want to go to, but let's just suppose it's this one for now. So my position there is, well, those numbers there with the X, Y, Z. And what you're going to do is a bit of trigonometry. So usually this comes down to doing inverse tan. Um, and if you want to know how to do that, have a look at some trigonometry online or whatever. Um, but for simplicity in this video, I've made a little angle calculator, which we can put in our coordinates. And um, this essentially does inverse tan for us. So point two is the point we're going to. I'm going to use the current coordinates there and just got X and Z coordinates because the actual height doesn't matter. Um, then we're going to go back to the start. And we're going to see where does Banjo actually move from. Um, so you kind of start having freedom in your movement. About here. So we're going to use these coordinates and then we're going to calculate our angle. The actual angle that I want to move at is about 180 degrees. Um, I've scrolled it to the right there. That's really annoying. 180 degrees. I'm going to go out on a limb and say we're going for exactly 180 degrees because I only used approximates to calculate all this. So rather than that, and remembering we're able to hit bottles at 15512 before, let's see if we can, instead of doing that, actually try and hit 180 degrees on every frame and see if that gets us to bottles any faster. Because what we were actually doing before is we started at 190 and the angle sort of swept all the way down to 170, 160 before we hit bottles. So if we could have been at 180, which is the average anyway, that would have worked out really well. So pretty much all you need to do here is mess with your analog inputs until your movement angle looks to be 180. So that's 194 there. So maybe what we can do is we can modify that. You have to figure out what frame's actually going to change your angle, not that frame. Here we go. This frame is changing our angle. So let's uh, move down until we're hitting 180. Now 62 is the highest this goes up to on 64. So I've gone all the way that I can down on the Y axis. I'm going to go on the X axis now and pull that back. So uh, 184, 183, 182, 181, uh, 179.921. Let's go with that. So then I'm going to copy these inputs through and then we're going to see if we can just tweak these inputs a little bit. So we're moving at 179. And next frame, we're still moving at 179, so that's good. Uh, this is getting a bit low for my liking, 179.3. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to bump this up, and hopefully we can change that. Uh, it's probably that one there. 180.2, that's looking a lot better. So we're moving up to 52 there. All right, next frame. Uh, that's still 180, that's still about 180. Yeah, that's good. Now that one's concerning 179.3. So we're going to go here. We're going to bump that up. Now we're at 179.7. And if I bump it up again, 180.5. So let's go 179.7. And then we're just going to repeat this process. Now it's very tedious and I do apologize about this, but that's essentially what we have to do. So jump back there, bump it up. Uh, maybe that frame would be, yeah, it is 180.896. There we go. Uh, 179.257, 180.031, that's a lot better. So you can see my um, Y value is staying down, so I'm essentially holding down, but I'm holding more and more right as I go. So 51 goes all the way up through to 56. So I'm changing my joystick input to compensate for the camera. Now I'll also stress that a lot of games will have the camera actually movable by the player, and Banjo is a game like that. Um, but in this case, the camera is locked in this particular part of the game. So we have no control over that. Um, what you would really be doing when you have control over the camera is not only just figuring out what the best joystick position is to hold, but also messing with the camera and seeing if you can get any better outcomes. So this is 179.6. We bump it up to 180. And then our next frame, if we can do that, it's 179.6, 189. Uh, cool. We keep bumping those down. That one's a bit low, so we'll bump this one up to hopefully 180.031. Pull those inputs down. And that's 179 pretty consistently all the way through. We'll bump this one up. 
Maybe that needs to go up to 59. Maybe this one needs to go up. Maybe that one needs to go up. There we go, 179. Now I've hit 62 on the X, so now I'm going to start pulling down the Y value. I get 180.162. I'm going to keep going through like that. 179, 179, so we can pull that down to 58. That works really well. So we can pull this one up. All right, so that's the basic process. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll cut the video here so you can see the X value is swept up and the Y value is swept down. I'm going to keep doing that. And when we come back, I should hopefully have made a complete path to bottles. All right, so we're back and I pretty much filled out the rest of these inputs with angles. Um, if you look really closely, I'll slow it right down and we have a look at the moving angle. You can see pretty much the entire time it's going to stay around that 179, 180 mark. That is a lot better than what we were doing before, which was just holding the straight angle and letting it sweep from 190 all the way down to 170. You want to move in straight lines. That's how you optimize 3D games. All right, so that's all around 180. I could have done that a little bit better, but it is what it is. Uh, let's go through and we'll have a look. So remembering last time we we're at 15512, that's where we hit bottles. Let's see what we got here. Uh, we're going to step it forward and 15508, saving a wonderful four frames. And that is brilliant. So it might not seem like much, just four frames. But remember, this was only about a second of gameplay, really, maybe a little bit longer. So I've actually saved maybe about, you know, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 second of a second every second if I'm doing this. And that's how you optimize 3D. So that's a really simple example. And what we're going to move on to next is sort of how you're going to do this on a macro scale. Maybe how you're going to bot some of this kind of stuff and automate the process. Because if you do this all by hand, you're going to take years and years and years to make a 3D TAS. And even if you automate a lot of the stuff, it may end up still taking you years to make a 3D TAS because they're pretty difficult to do. All right, so I want to show you what this kind of stuff looks like in practice in an actual TAS setting. So this is my any percent low TAD slash TAS of Banjo-Kazooie and we're in Mad Monster Mansion. So what I was doing through the entire process was I was taking note of the coordinates of everywhere that I wanted to go and also calculating the angles that I needed. So for example, if I want to go to Logo's Pole here, from where I was to where I need to go, that's an angle of 12 degrees. And if we pull up the TAS and we have a look at the movement angle, you'll see I'm pretty much going to be moving at 12 the entire way there. Now, Banjo-Kazooie is kind of funny because um, what actually happens is when you jump, you're locked into a movement angle. Um, so when I jump here, I'll be locked into nine, for example. Now, I think it's changed from 12 to nine because I was messing with the inputs before, but that's beside the point. This is how it works. So Banjo jumps and you're locked into that angle of nine and then you sort of deviate to and from that angle. Uh, what you want to do to optimize Banjo-Kazooie is you want to jump and pick the best angle that you can in this case, let's say that's 9.5. And then you want to keep your speed as high as possible. Because if your speed is as high as possible, that means you're moving at that angle. Whereas if you start moving off to the side, you'll actually start losing speed compared to where you're supposed to be moving. So that's sort of how my optimization worked for this. You manually pick a direction to jump. So you jump off there. And then you're going to be optimizing your speed. So not looking at your angle anymore, just keeping that speed at basically 700 like in Talent Trump. So that's pretty much what we're doing. Now, I also want to talk to you about my line script that I programmed, because if you're tasking a 3D game, you'll want to program one of these for yourself. Now, unfortunately, I just spent ages playing with it, but I can't get it to work on the newer version of BizHawk properly. Um, the closest I could get is to get it to do this, but pretty much it's going to mess up the TAS. Um, let's have a look at what it did do, though. Uh, so you just type in line, what frame do you want to start on? What frame do you want to hold A until? And then what frame do you want to finish your simulation on? And then you just hit enter there. What it does is it cycles through all of the coordinates that you could be using. Um, and then it basically figures out which one of those maximizes your speed. Now, because the script is unfortunately broken on the newer version of BizHawk, it's going to give me terrible inputs to maximize the speed. But you can sort of see what's happening here. It's trying all the inputs that it could possibly try. And then it's seeing which one is the best. Um, so... 
it's not necessarily just brute forcing. What it's actually doing is it's looking, well, what was the input that you pressed on the last frame? And then it's trying maybe about five degrees either side of that input. So if I'm holding 3962, what it should be trying is maybe down to 3562 and up to 4462, something like that. And that would give you a nice little range, which is close to the angle on the previous frame. And because your angles don't need to change that much, they only change a little bit each frame. So essentially it's a brute forcing script. Now other people have made much better line scripts for Banjo-Kazooie than I was able to when I did it. Um, since then, people have actually figured out all the code of the game and it reads exactly where the camera is and everything to figure out exactly what analog uh, input you need to press to move in a straight line. But you can either do it like that or you can do it with brute forcing. Either way, you'll get the same result. If this line script still worked properly, it would spit out an output something like this, which keeps me going at about 700 velocity per frame. Now, I stress that not all games work like this. So some games you can move within your jump. So you'd be wanting to optimize your angle every frame. We'll talk a little bit about that before we finish up. Okay, last thing I want to talk about is how we actually define an optimization metric. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, the one that we've been using up till now is angle optimization. We've been looking at what angle do I need to travel to hit, let's say this jiggy on the screen, and let's try and aim for as close as we can to that angle. So suppose you got Banjo there and a jiggy there and you have their coordinates. Uh, those are just some example coordinates. Uh, then you can draw a right angle triangle and you can work out your angle from this. So if we look at the height of that triangle, that's the difference between the 150 and the 40. So that would be 110. And then the difference between the X coordinates would be 100 take 30, which gives you 70. You get a situation like this. And then what you can do is you can actually work out that angle there by doing inverse tan of the 110 over 170. This is the soccer toa stuff striking again. So the angle calc program that I showed you before, which spat out what angle I needed to travel at, it's literally just doing this and you can code that up into a program for yourself. Now, quite often, um, that's not how you would measure the angle. You would measure it from like north in a game or a particular reference point. Let's do this one, for example, if I wanted the angle in there. Well, that's just 90 take away the angle I just calculated. So that's how you would approach something like that. And then you could just shoot for an angle of 32.742 degrees. Now, this method's good. Um, but the issue with it is, let's suppose you didn't quite hit that angle of 32. You were a little bit off of it. Then technically you should recalculate a new angle for the next frame. Now it'll be pretty close to 32.4, but you should actually be then aiming for a different angle. So that's sort of the drawback of this method. Now let's get rid of all this angle stuff. Cause the other one that I want to talk about is distance optimization. So with distance optimization, what you could be doing in this is trying to minimize distance to the object on any given frame. So if you want to work out the distance uh, from Banjo to the Jiggy there, it's literally just Pythagoras. And then you might move somewhere else on a different frame. So let's say we've moved on the next frame. We've moved to those new coordinates there. That's just an example. And then the Jiggy is going to be at the same coordinates. And then those are our new distances separating those two coordinates. Uh, so then you can work out your new distance there. And it's 128.3. The distance is a little bit lower because we've moved closer to the jiggy. So what you could do in a distance optimization metric is you could try a bunch of different stuff on a frame and keep whatever one puts you the shortest distance to your target point. In this case, that's the jiggy. And you could even write yourself a program which minimizes distance. Personally, I think distance optimization is a better method because you don't have to keep recalculating an angle every frame. Um, but both are possible to, let's say, program up into a brute forcing program to check what angle you need to hold. Or maybe if you program up something that shows you how far away you are from your desired object, you can actually try a bunch of stuff by hand and see what can you do, which minimizes that distance. So both are good methods and they're by far not the only method. These are just the two that I would think of first of all to try. So that's going to be pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, I hope it wasn't too messy and I hope you found it useful. At any rate, the key thing to take away from it is that if you're holding the same direction on a joystick, that doesn't necessarily mean your character is going to move in a straight line. You have to be really, really careful with 3D games and there's no easy way to go about it. It's a much more difficult optimization problem. If you enjoyed this video, then a subscription would always be appreciated. Um, I'm hoping to put out more Taz tutorials soon. I have a couple of ideas still of what we could do for it. And I hope you found it useful so far. Thanks so much for watching.